All right then, we were gonna begin our discussion on transmission line modeling today. We've seen per unit quantities so far, we've had a couple of discussions on those, um, and we're gonna move into transmission line modeling for a change. And the three basic elements we need to consider ourselves with when we're modeling transmission lines are resistance, inductance, and capacitance. And we're gonna start with the most basic of them, resistance. So let's kind of define what resistance of a conductor is. is um, what our objective today is we're gonna to relate the physical quantities, the physical parameters of a, of a conductor to resistance and see what the math mathematical formulation there is. Now, how would you define the resistance of a conductor? I think it's, uh, this is something we are all very familiar with, this concept of resistance. The word itself uh, kind of defines it and it's something that we've, We've been introduced to very early on, uh, one of the first concepts we were introduced to when we started studying electricity. But uh, just for the sake, let me just quickly write down what the resistance of a conductor, what, what do we really mean by that? So basically the resistance of a conductor, what we're saying is it's basically the opposition to electric current passing from the conductor, right? passing through a conductor. All right, so what are the some of the factors that this resistance, this opposition depends upon? So let's write down some of the factors. There are three basic factors that, factors affecting resistance. There are three basic factors that we need to worry about. One is the material. So what material is our conductor made of? For example, is it a copper conductor? Is it an aluminum conductor? Second is the shape of this conductor. Is it a cylindrical conductor? Is it a rectangular conductor? And the third thing are, sorry, the third thing is the dimensions. And if I had gone to my English classes regularly, I would have known how to spell that correctly. Um, sorry, uh, so the third thing is dimensions. Things like cross-sectional area and length. So let's see why why these are and how these are important. I'll come back to the material in the end. Let's start with the shape and the dimensions. So the shape could be, let's say, cylindrical. So you could have a cylindrical conductor, for example. We could have a rectangular conductor as well, right? Why is the shape important? The shape is important because the shape gives us the area, the cross-sectional area. For example, if it is a cylindrical um, conductor, then the cross-sectional area, if I look at it in two dimensions from this view, you see this, right? And this has a radius r. So the area could be defined as pi r square. Whereas if it's a rectangular conductor, and if I'm looking at the two-dimensional view from there, I have this dimension A, B, and the area is A times B. So that's where the shape is important because that gives us the area. Why is the area important? So let's, let me draw another conductor here. So this was conductor one, let's say, and this is conductor two. It's just imagine this as being a circle of some sort. And this is conductor two. Which of these two conductors do you think? So this is conductor two, and this was conductor one. Which of these two conductors do you think would allow more current to pass through? It would be conductor two because the, the cross-sectional area is higher. 
If we go back and compare it to the analogy of water passing through a pipe, that is how a lot of us were probably introduced to concepts of voltage and current. So just imagine this to be a small pipe and this to be a pipe of a larger radius, which would allow more water to pass through. More volume of water would pass through, obviously through the larger uh, pipe, through the pipe that has a larger radius, the larger diameter. And the same concept applies here. So more current would pass through to the larger conductor, right? Through a conductor that has the higher, um, the larger radius. So what does that mean? That means radius, uh, sorry, resistance R is inversely proportional to the area. The larger the area, the less the resistance, right? Remember, resistance is the opposition to electric current passing through. So if more current is passing through, through this conductor, that means it's offering less resistance, right? And the smaller the area, so smaller the area, larger the resistance, right? So therefore, resistance is inversely proportional to the area. What about the length? So I have this conductor, conductor one, and then another conductor here. Let's say this is a hundred kilometers conductor, right? And this conductor C1 is just one kilometer. Again, intuitively, what do you think which conductor would have the larger resistance? Of course, the one that's longer in length because now the current has to go through 100 kilometers. So this conductor, all things being equal with this other conductor, imagine now these two have the same area, right? So these two have the same area, they're made of the same material, but one is just longer than the other. Now current has to pass through 100 kilometers, so this conductor is offering larger resistance than this particular conductor. So what does that mean for us? That means resistance is directly proportional to the length L. So if I write this down, resistance is proportional, directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to the area. Length here is measured in meters and area is measured in meters square. Now, if we have to convert this proportionality into an equation, we need something that's called a proportionality constant. It's a concept that we should all have been introduced to earlier in our studies. So that needs to be a constant, right? So let me write that equation down for you. R is equal to, our proportionally constant is this symbol rho times L over A, where rho is called resistivity. Let me write that down a little bit more clearly so then you understand what I'm writing and you remember it better. Resistivity. Remember how we said there are three things resistance depends on? The material, the shape, and the dimensions. So we saw the dimensions, area, and length. We saw the shape being accounted for because the shape defines our area. And I said I'll come back to material later. So this is where the material concept comes into play. Resistivity is a constant. It's a constant that depends on the material. So copper, for example, would have a resistivity that is different than the resistivity for aluminum. And that would be, there's a constant value for that, which we'll, which we'll see in the example now. So this is the equation that I want you to remember. Remember when we started, we said our, our objective for today is to try and relate the physical properties of the conductor to the resistance and capture them mathematically. So this is how we do that. So you have the length, the area, the resistivity, which depends on the material of the conductor. This is how it relates to the resistance of a conductor. Let us do an example with this basic equation to help us understand this concept even better and see how this formula is used. So for example, you've been given, uh, you're told that you are working with a 
conductor which is let's say 10 meters in length it is a copper conductor it has a cross-sectional area of 50 millimeters square right what you'd first find out or what should probably be given to you is that the the rho or the resistivity of copper is 1.77 times 10 to the power minus 8. Now just imagine what would the units be here. So we know the unit of resistance is ohms. Let me write that. I'm just trying to find a place to write that down in. Okay, let's quickly do this. Right, we know this is ohms. So we don't know for rho what it is, we have to find out. We know meters for this, meter square for this, and let's assume this is x, which we don't know. Meter square, so meter, meter, there it goes. So x becomes rho meters. That is the unit of resistivity, right? So Rho of copper is, or resistivity of copper is 1.77 times 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meters. So given all these, uh, all these parameters and you're told to find what is, you're asked to find what is resistance. Let's plug it in. So our solution becomes R is equal to rho, we're given that times 10 to the power minus 8. What is the length? Length is given to us as 10 meters. What is the area? It's given to us as 50. Remember, millimeter square. What should it be? It should be meter square. So we will multiply this with 10 to the power minus 6. And if you plug those values into your calculator, you should get something like 0 0.004 ohms. That should be your answer for that equation, uh, for that problem. Very simple. The dimensions are given, uh, the uh, parameters are given to you. You just have to plug them in the in the formula and get the answer. Only thing you need to be careful of are the units. Remember, your length should be in meters, your area should be in meters square, and your resistivity should be in ohm meters. As always, I'll leave you with a sample problem for you to go and, and solve. Uh, this will hopefully better your understanding of the concept that we've just learned. Uh, feel free to leave the answers uh, of the sample problem once you calculate it in the comment section um, and I will uh, get to them and if you have any questions let me know as well. So what's our sample problem for today? Let's assume you have a one kilometer conductor. It's an aluminum conductor your cross-sectional area is 150 millimeters square and you're given your resistivity of aluminum to be equal to, let me write that down clearly so there is absolutely no confusion there. So your resistivity of aluminum is equal to 2.83 times 10 to the power minus 8 that is an 8 minus 8 ohm meter and you're asked to find what is the resistance. Very simple, just plug it in, keep a note of the dimensions and you should be good to go. Alright then, that was a very quick discussion um, on what resistance is. Um, I'm going to come back and we're going to do some more videos on uh, this concept of resistance. Um, again, there is, uh, we have to account for temperature variances and we have to account for something called skin effect. So I'll leave you with those thoughts and uh, see you in the next videos. Alright, take care guys. Bye now.